Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My respected brothers and sisters in Islam This video you are about to watch is about cryptocurrency by Dr. Alaru and this is the first part of it Try to listen and watch the video from the beginning to an end It is just about cryptocurrency Islamic perspective it really explains in detail what Islamic see or what is Islamic perspective about cryptocurrency having watched spirit on land try to comment subscribe and share to other Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. In the beginning, we, we thank Almighty Allah for making us who we are, believers in Him and in His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May the peace and blessings of Allah continue to be on our noble Prophet, the Messenger of Allah. All of his companions, members of his household, and whoever follow their footsteps, whoever follows their footsteps until the day of resurrection. I mean, uh, my dear brothers and sisters, members of today's audience, I say unto you all, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let me begin by saying this. You see, what we have witnessed this morning is a perfect manifestation of the issue we are to discuss. Those who invented cryptocurrency, they are actually trying to run away from being regulated. And what we have just seen this morning is an offshoot of over regulation of today's lecture. You have decapacitated uh, the abilities of participants to unmute. You have decapacitated the ability to even start their own video. So this is a manifestation of what led into the birth of cryptocurrency in the first place. People want to be free. They don't want to be over regulated. So it's a perfect example of what we are going to discuss. Uh, having said that, uh, I think I'm being heard. Yes, sir. We are, we are following you, sir. We overregulated this meeting. We are following ah, you, sir. That's exactly what happened this morning. You overregulated. Yeah, you. And this is what, you, what, is the, uh, what the inventors of cryptocurrency, they did not want that. They didn't want somebody to be regulating them. Now, having said this, uh, I need to say a word or two to commend the organizers of today's event. Uh, the two parties put together. I want to uh, let this one be on record that I, you've, you've actually had my respect for your behavior. Our audience might not know, but I must tell them this. The two of you invited me separately. In fact, you did not even know each other. You were not aware of each other's invitation for me. But when I received your invitations, and I saw that it is the same theme, the same topic that both of you wanted me to come and discuss, then I told you, go and collaborate, go and cooperate with one another and organize an event that will be beneficial to the Ummah. And this is exactly what you have done. Uh, I must say this because I want to see more and more people in the Muslim Ummah having the same mentality. It doesn't matter who does what. What matters to us is what results are we getting. And I pray to Almighty Allah that he will reward you handsomely and abundantly uh, the two parties for what you have done, and I want you to keep uh, doing the same thing, cooperate with one another, collaborate with one another, 
What matters is getting the result. It doesn't matter uh, whether it is party A that organizes the lecture or party B that organizes the program. But if we can have collaboration and cooperation that will give us a better result, I think we are far, far better off as a Muslim Ummah. Um, I'm still on the introduction. When you ask me to come and talk about cryptocurrency, I hesitated in the beginning because I, thought, I, I, I said to myself, of all the issues, of all the topics that must be of concern to the Muslim Ummah, these gentlemen and women are actually calling me to come and discuss cryptocurrency. Does discussing cryptocurrency deserve uh, uh, such an attention? I must be sincere with you. That was the initial question that I asked myself. But in answering that question, and that is why I'm here this morning, I also answered that question myself in three different ways that show clearly, and I'm going to share those uh, perspectives with you that show clearly that today's program, today's topic, today's lecture is actually very important to the Muslim Ummah, particularly all over the world, but particularly in Nigeria. Reason number one, the issue of cryptocurrency has resulted in a lot of confusion. Confusion at the legal and regulatory level, and even confusion at the Sharia level. You can go back to the, to the, uh, to, to the title screen. We are still on the introduction. I have not yet started uh, going through my slides. Moderator, uh, go, go back, okay. I said the first way that we can see the importance of today's lecture is because of the confusion that we have all over the world in relation to cryptocurrency. Legal confusion, regulatory confusion, and unfortunately even in court, Sharia confusion. What do I mean by all this? When you hear of a country like Nigeria, last month in February, the Central Bank of Nigeria came up with a regulatory requirement to all banks in Nigeria that it has become illegal to facilitate payment through cryptocurrencies in any transaction in Nigeria. So that is the position of a country like Nigeria. But if I must tell you, another country like United States of America, even America has holdings, crypto holdings up till today. And today is 27th of March. By next tomorrow, on 29th of March, America has already announced that it is going to auction to sell some of its crypto holdings to members of the public. So where are, we, where are we heading? A country is prohibiting and another country is legalizing and even buying and selling a country as big, as important as the United States of America. On 29th of this month, that is the day after tomorrow, it is going to even auction a number of its cryptocurrency, uh, cryptocurrency holdings to members of the public. So we have that confusion, even at the legal and regulatory level. Even at the Sharia level, we are not left out. Countries, Muslim countries like Egypt, like Turkey, the Sharia authorities in both countries have issued fatwa to declare cryptocurrency as haram in Egypt and uh, Turkey two prominent Muslim countries for that matter. The Sharia authorities in those two countries have declared cryptocurrency to be haram, that you shouldn't trade in cryptocurrency. Now, when you look back at the other country, a, also a predominantly Muslim country and a very important one, especially when we talk in terms of the financial services, Islamic financial services. Bahrain will always come either first or second in this palace. Bahrain as a country, it's not only saying cryptocurrency is halal, but it has announced recently that it is going to even issue a Sharia compliant cryptocurrency. So where are we going? 
just as we saw it at the legal and regulatory level, we are still seeing the same confusion even at the Sharia level. A Sharia authority in a country declaring uh, the same cryptocurrency as haram, while an, in another country it is being declared as uh, halal. The same thing that I said about Bahrain is also true about United Arab, Iran, United Arab Emirates, precisely in Dubai. So we have that confusion. That is part of what convinced me that I should honor your invitation to come and talk to the entire Muslim Ummah from the Islamic perspective, Islamic law perspective of cryptocurrency. So I said in three ways, that's just the first one. The second one that led me into thinking that, oh, what these organizers are calling me for deserves my attention and about the attention of the entire Muslim Ummah is about the size of the cryptocurrency market itself. A, one of those cryptocurrencies, because we have many currencies, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin happens to be the most popular, the most, uh, the, 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 the most uh, famous among people. If I should tell you that Bitcoin alone has a market capitalization of $1 trillion, as of today. So you are talking of a very big, a very huge market. Market capitalization of Bitcoin as a single unit, just one unit of cryptocurrencies is in the region of $1 trillion. That's a very huge amount of money that it will be difficult to see or to tell Muslims to close their eyes and not to look in that direction. It will be very difficult unless you have a very strong reason for saying so. So this is the reason number two, why I thought really, I agreed with the organizers that yes, we should come and discuss cryptocurrency from the Islamic perspective. The third and final reason why I agreed to be here this morning is because we are talking from Nigeria. I know we have participants from all over the world, but the, the organizers are based in Nigeria. And I want to believe that majority or perhaps a large percentage of our audience today uh, will be from Nigeria. Cryptocurrency in Nigeria is of a very special importance. Today, Nigeria is not just the largest economy in Africa. It is also the house for the biggest market of cryptocurrency in Africa. The biggest cryptocurrency market and the, on the continent of Africa is here in Nigeria. Not only that, in fact, globally, globally, in year 2020, when a study was carried out to look at the trading volumes of cryptocurrencies in the world, Nigeria actually ranked top in the world. Ranked top in the world. Just coming only after the United States of America and Russia, Nigeria was placed number three in the whole world. It means cryptocurrency is very, very significant to us in Nigeria. We have the biggest market on the continent, and we are even ranking number three in the world in terms of trading and investment in the cryptocurrency market. Um, uh, so I think with those three reasons, uh, uh, you will agree with me that, yes, we have a very good ground of coming to discuss cryptocurrency from an Islamic law perspective. Before I move on, uh, I said Nigeria is, a, is the biggest market today in Africa and ranking number three in the world. That should be a source of concern, not just Sharia concern, but I think there is a strong need for us as a nation to assess the immediate and remote implication of this economically on our economy. If Nigeria is ranking number three, we are not ranking even number 20 in terms of the sizes of economy in the world. But how come we are number three in terms of trading in, and investing in cryptocurrency? That should have both remote and immediate implications to any country's economy. And uh, I want to uh, call on our economists uh, in Nigeria, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, that they should actually look critically into that and, and advise the relevant authorities accordingly. My brothers and sisters in Islam, are we still together? Yes, we are with yes, you, sir. sir. We are following. Now yes. we, can start, we can start 
displaying the slides. Let's go to slide number one now. So that is just that was just an introductory uh, message that I have for you. Now we can start. Is the end of the part one of Islamic law and perspective about the cryptocurrency. Try to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button, comment, like, and share to other Muslims. Then continue the next part by clicking below. Assalamu alaikum.